Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrative Coordinator and co-host of this program, though as you can see, my fearless leader, Chairman Bill Gehring, is not with us today, so I'm going to do my best to take the lead without his help. We're very fortunate today to have two special guests that are going to talk a little bit about UW-Sheboygan and all the exciting new developments out here, as well as some of the opportunities and challenges ahead. First, Dean Ray Hernandez is with us, as well as, and I want to make sure I get this title correct, the Assistant Campus Dean for Administrative Services, Mr. Richard Barnhouse. Yes, the title is correct. Gentlemen, it's yes. good to have you with us. Thank you. Glad to, glad to be here. Ray, why don't we start with you? Please share a little bit about your role and responsibilities as, as Dean of UW-Sheboygan. Uh, well, basically, you know, my title is Dean, but I'm the uh, Campus Executive Officer, which means that I'm in, I'm in charge of the entire campus and all the operations and the programming and uh, staffing and, and, and that sort of thing. And uh, I also am responsible for uh, uh, interacting with the community, uh, with the government and legislative uh, leaders and business leaders and, and community groups and essentially be the, uh, uh, the contact with the community for the campus. And when did you start here as dean? I started here in July of 2000. So this July, I will have completed six years. How quickly the time passes. Yeah. I started as uh, county administrative coordinator in January of 1999, so you and I were both relatively new to yeah. our positions here, and it's been certainly a pleasure working with you. Rich, turning to you, you're one of the, the newer kids on the block am, here at UW Sheboygan. Absolutely. When did you start? And please share a little bit about your role and responsibilities. Sure. I came on board in August of 2004 um, from the University of South Carolina, um, which gave me some good experience in public administration at a large, uh, comprehensive university. Um, in my role, my title, the Assistant Campus Dean for Administrative Services, I basically oversee everything outside of the classroom and everything outside of student affairs. And I report directly to Ray, the dean and CEO. Um, some of my main responsibilities, for example, would be uh, I'm the chief financial officer. Um, I oversee human resources, facilities. Um, I do some of the things with the county on behalf of the dean. Um, information technology, food service, bookstore, the auxiliaries. Um, so really everything on campus that uh, doesn't have anything to do with uh, academics or directly related to student affairs. Very good. Yeah. And it's been since August of 04. Since August of 04, so yeah. I'm coming up on entering my third year yeah. here on, on campus. And it's been a great experience so far. Yeah. Um, a lot of exciting things going on on campus. Well, it's been great to have you. I Thank know you. you two make a good team. And speaking of teamwork, I think a lot of people don't recognize that UW-Sheboygan, the, the buildings and grounds are owned by Sheboygan County, mm -hmm. county government, and, and the state obviously is responsible for the, the staffing and the personnel and, and a lot of the administration here. Mm -hmm. So it, it's been a long-standing mm -hmm. relationship and I think a very productive one. Mm -hmm. Ray, please share a little history with our viewers about this relationship, this partnership. Well, the partnership actually began in the um, 1930s. Uh, with what was then called the uh, Wisconsin idea, where the University of Wisconsin uh, was partnering up with local units of government to provide programming to local residents. So uh, the original UW uh, center, if you will, uh, was located where Central High School is now, and it was part of the center system. And then in 1963, then the, the current campus was built uh, between, uh, by the county. But the relationship has been fantastic. I mean, in terms of uh, the university providing the programming and, and services for the local residents and the county you know, providing the facility uh, for the programming to happen, you know, it's a wonderful partnership and really benefits uh, the local citizens here. And with this relationship and obviously <clears throat> UW-Sheboygan here being here for, when did you say it was built in 1960? 1963, 1963. when this campus would be done, yes. Uh, clearly there's been growth, there's been demand by the community <clears throat> and students to, to come here and, 
and what have you seen just in the last few years from a standpoint of student enrollment? Um, there's, there's been a pretty steady increase over the past five years, although it's sort of leveling off right now. But we've seen a significant growth in what we call non-traditional age students. You know, those are students that are 22 years old or older, you know, more adult type of students, mm -hmm. to the point that we're 35% uh, or more of our enrollment now are adult students. So we see a trend of adult students coming back uh, to college, if you will, you know, picking up wherever they left off and interested in pursuing uh, you know, educa uh, more education. So about how many students in total are enrolled here now? Um, between 750, 800 students, something like that. You know, we've been holding pretty steady now for a couple of years in that range. Uh, that should hold for another year or two. In, in about two years, I anticipate another spike. Very good. And one of the things I know you two have been working real hard at is improving the program <coughs> and, and just improving the standing of this facility, period. And Rich, certainly you've had a key role in that. And one of the things I know you both have been working on is creating more of a relationship with the four-year campuses. Absolutely. How does that work? Yeah. Well, what we try to do is uh, provide a, great, a greater breadth of uh, educational opportunities here on campus. And it's something that the dean is really done an outstanding job in, in developing relationships with the four years, which allow us to offer different opportunities, educationally speaking. Um, so this allows us, through these collaborations with the, some of the four years, to offer baccalaureate degrees on, right here on campus so that students don't have to transfer. Uh, you know, I'm sure there was a time on campus here, probably not too long before I came, when students would complete two years and then they would have to transfer if they wanted to complete a, a baccalaureate degree. Mm -hmm. um, that's no longer the case in a, in a number of fields, including uh, business and management, uh, information technologies, uh, as well as uh, there are really a plethora of other areas that we have collaborative degree programs with uh, the other four-year institutions. So basically what that means is our students can stay on campus and complete their bachelor's degree. Uh, right here on campus, as well as one of a, a master's degree uh, in education. Uh, and the dean is continuing to really uh, push this, which we think is a great initiative, um, and really allowing our campus to grow and expand. And so we're to, we've got some other things uh, that we're considering uh, in engineering and education, because there are obviously uh, there's great need in Sheboygan County for, for those types of uh, professionals. So that's really been beneficial to us. Um, and really, we, we need to thank the four years as well for being strong partners uh, in bringing this programming to the community because there are many students that are place bound. Um, and really, if they wanted a baccalaureate education, they wouldn't be able to leave Sheboygan County. And so now we're, we're really beginning to, to bring these programs right to, right to our neighborhood, so to speak, so that people can stay, uh, you know, families and jobs here, and they can get their complete and comprehensive <laughs> education right here in Sheboygan County. So we're, we're excited about it and we're very excited about the, you know, increasing the programs uh, at the baccalaureate level here on campus. More, more opportunity we can provide yeah, to people, yeah. better. Right, yeah. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, our, our most recent uh, baccalaureate uh, offering is in nursing, uh, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, uh, tailored to meet the needs of of nursing students who already hold a two-year degree in nursing, and now by bringing the, the bachelor's option here, they're able to then complete four years of nursing right here on UW Sibaldi. And that just started a couple of years ago, or yeah, has it been less than I, I that? No, about a year ago. About a year ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that, that program is very strong, you know, uh, lots, lots of interest and good enrollments. Yeah. Outstanding. Right. This is really the new frontier for us, I think, yeah. uh, bringing baccalaureate education right to Sheboygan. <coughs> now, to set the stage a little bit, because I imagine a number of our viewers aren't aware that, you know, just how fortunate we are to have a campus here. There's 72 counties across the state, and if memory serves, and certainly correct me, there are 13 yes. that are two-year campuses, mm -hmm. correct? and yes. obviously they're scattered throughout, mm -hmm. and then you have how many four-year campuses? 13. 13. Mm -hmm. So 13 four-year, 13 two-year, mm -hmm. and now uh, Sheboygan County, the 
people of this community have an opportunity to come here to a two-year campus, but literally get a four-year degree. Absolutely. Which has got to help the pocketbook as well oh, for people. Sure. Oh, tremendously, yeah. yeah. Outstanding. Well, speaking of the pocketbook, uh, <laughs> times aren't getting easier from mm -hmm. a standpoint of resources. We, uh, we've had um, a number of challenges at the county and state mm -hmm. level, but with that said, as you know, we need to continue to invest in our infrastructure and we need to continue to provide a strong educational system. And there's been some really nice improvements made here of late under your leadership, Ray. Certainly the uh, HVAC system, we had a real concern there mm -hmm. with staff mm -hmm. and, and the professionals working here and mm. all the <coughs> students obviously and we put about a two million dollar upgrade there yeah. we just completed the science edition which is about a five six million dollar improvement here which I think people are really beginning to appreciate mm -hmm. and now <laughs> we're looking at a new technology mm -hmm. center which is just wonderful news for the for the campus and for this community um, we just broke ground what was it a couple few weeks ago That's right. yeah. 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 Um, Ray, please begin by sharing a little bit about what this new technology center means to UW Sheboygan and the students that come here. Well, um, what it will mean is that we'll now be able to offer uh, up to date, state of the art um, instruction in technology um, and, and provide um, equipment and, and laboratories that would meet the needs of now and today, but future. Uh, students who are, I mean, technology, every, everything is imbued with technology now, and so we have to try to remain current in that area. And then we'll also be able to uh, uh, provide a, a brand new state of the art library, uh, and that library will be much larger and much a more modern, uh, technologically advanced library that will be of use not only to our students. Uh, but also to the community at large. This is, you know, a, a tiny facility, and then this library, uh, this building will be prominently a prominent part of our campus, right at the entrance of our campus. So it will provide access to the general public to this facility, and that's something that we, you know, we wanted to provide as well. Now. Uh, as you know, it was no small feat to, to bring this vision to reality and, and frankly, if it wasn't for uh, a member of our business community really stepping up, it wouldn't have happened. You spoke earlier about the, the strong relationship, the, the uh, partnership between the county and the state, mm -hmm. but we've added an, a third party. Yeah. Why don't you touch on that a little bit? Well, you know, today the, the taxpayers uh, of the county and of the state have been uh, very generous in support, you know, the town of our supervisors and supporting this facility, but the reality is that public dollars are becoming tighter and tighter, you know, as budgets get trimmed and, and we have less and less to work with. So our only alternative then in terms of trying to expand the facility is to seek some private private dollars. And so this is uh, new territory for us and fortunately we have some uh, some benevolent private uh, businesses in the area who believe in education, who believe in giving back to the community, uh, providing services to, uh, to the citizens of Suburban Town. And so uh, with respect to the new technology center, uh, <coughs> a charity company uh, stepped forward with a very generous donation of $1.8 million towards construction of that building which represents the largest dona private donation to any of the 13 uh, two-year campuses to date. So <coughs> Mr. Ben Salzman, the CEO there, and Acuity, as you said, really stepped up, and I'm, yeah. I'm certain uh, the, the vast majority of our viewers have to have seen an article in the paper or heard something about this mm -hmm. already, but clearly the partnership between the county, the state, and the private sector, yeah. and just a major contribution like that is helping bring this to reality and, mm -hmm. and it's wonderful. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Now as we talk about some of the good things that have happened out here and some of the improvements over the years, uh, clearly there are some trends or challenges that we're being posed with and Rich obviously mm -hmm. is the <coughs> chief financial officer yeah. and, and overseeing that. What are, what are some of those trends or uh, upcoming concerns yeah, that yeah. you may see on the horizon when it comes to the relationships that we have with the county and the state? Sure. and 
yeah. and challenges that you have to contend with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anybody that um, receives funding from the state, I'm certain is going through the same things, and I'm certain that the county is as well. And we're seeing reduced uh, budgets, uh, reduced funding from the from the state. Um, but like I said, that's affecting everybody who is state su supported. And so we need to be doing things better with less. And I think that we're doing that through our collaborative de degree programs um, and really with our partnership with the county, quite honestly, uh, as our, so to some degree, our, our bread and butter. Um, so I think those relationships are very, very important. Uh, as state support uh, dwindles, it's going to be the uh, outreaching to, to the community, to, to corporations uh, like Acuity, and definitely our strength in our relationship with the county. Um, but at the same time, we need to do things um, for the students and make sure that we don't forget our purpose here, and that's providing uh, an education. And so by serving the, stu the students through a more comprehensive education, we also serve ourselves as far as increasing the number of students on campus and, and funding in, in that manner. Um, so those are some of the challenges that we're facing, really a reduced uh, budget that's uh, coming from the state. Uh, and, but we're not the only ones facing these problems. And uh, you hear about many of the four years who are increasing their enrollments uh, for obvious reasons. Um, you know, they're struggling just like everybody else. So we have to be creative. We have to do more with less. And this is really the time to, to de de develop those relationships. Uh, with people maybe the universities haven't in the past, and so that's really how we're addressing the, the situation. Um, but we're also being a lot more careful with our expenditures uh, on campus, and we're, we're being very, very uh, specific as to what we are uh, purchasing um, and really what type of longevity we're going to get out of those types of materials. Now with the county budget, yeah. uh, we will have our kickoff here in late June, and. Uh, all the departments, including um, uh, UW Sheboygan, because of the building and grounds mm -hmm. maintenance, uh, are part of that equation. Mm -hmm. uh, the county board will adopt our budget in November, and, and clearly, yeah. uh, the, because of the state caps in place, as well as just trying mm -hmm. to be fiscally conservative, mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be give and take, as you're aware of, that mm -hmm. happens every year, specifically with the state level mm -hmm. and the state budget, which obviously you're most concerned with from yeah. a standpoint of personnel and sure. covering administrative mm -hmm. costs and everything else mm -hmm. that goes on. Are there any specific areas that mm -hmm. you're, you've gotten some feel for? I know there are a two-year yeah. operating budget, but have you gotten any any um, guidance thus far as to some areas that you know they're going to make some adjustments in? Well, I think that we can be certain that our operational um, accounts uh, and our budgets will be far, far, far less. Um, now, when I say far less, it's not detrimental. Um, but anytime you're receiving less funding and your costs are increasing, um, it does become a little bit of a, of a challenge. Um, and that's what it is at this point, a challenge. And it's something that we can definitely overcome. Uh, at this point, it is operational uh, in nature. And we're not looking at um, faculty and staff at this point. Um, and I do sense that in the next few years, things may turn around again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, from the state side of things. Um, so right now, we're just dealing with uh, a limited operational budget. So it's, it's a challenge. But and Ray, we're... as he mentions, these limited operational funds and that you have to contend with, Clearly, you both know that there are certain needs that the campus has, mm -hmm. things that opportunities or needs in the future. How do you balance tightening your belt and making some of those operational mm -hmm. adjustments, yet addressing some of the areas you know need to be addressed yeah. to improve the campus? Well, unfortunately, you know, depending on what the, what the legislature does in this biennium and how, <clears throat> how deep uh, the cuts are going to be to the UW system, um, and, and something that I'm, I'm concerned about is that I'm hoping that it, we don't have to resort to raising tuition you know, in order to, to continue operating. But my fear is that, that it may go that way. Mm -hmm. you know, but but it's, it just depends on how, how deep right. uh, you know, the touch go. But, yeah. but that's the only way. I mean, just, yeah. to, 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 just to maintain uh, just to keep the doors open, you know, as, I, as Rich mentioned, the cost is going up. Mm -hmm. And if our revenue continues to go down, you know, there's a bridging point there that mm -hmm. it's got to come from somewhere. Right. And, right. Yeah. 
right? And, and it would be the same, but I think mm. that might be an area that right. would be impacted would be the yeah. tuition. And that, yeah, that's a very, very <laughs> important co uh, component. Um, and I'm glad you brought that up. Um, at this point in time, uh, as far as our institution is concerned, the 13, 13 um, uh, two-year colleges, approximately 60% of our revenue comes from tuition and approximately the other 40% comes from the state. And it wasn't too long ago that that equation was, was flipped, mm. or that ratio was flipped. Mm -hmm. So th we have seen some significant change in uh, probably six to eight years, I would guess. Uh, and um, uh, as Ray said, as the state support does dwindle, revenue has to continue coming in to keep the doors open, and the revenue is the tuition. <coughs> So we've talked about some of the, you know, the really nice improvements that have occurred out here and clearly the partnership that's been strengthened with now the business community yeah. stepping up for the science building, for the new mm -hmm. technology center. And I anticipate, as you've both suggested, we're going to see more of that in the future. Um, with that said, we continue to have these uh, real pressing financial concerns, in part borne mm -hmm. by the state, because with, <laughs> when, they're, when they have a budget crunch, that mm -hmm. tends to trickle down to the local level. The county is certainly going to be subject to that as well as all levels of government. And very recently we had some referendums in this mm -hmm. county, as you know, asking for more support for certain programs and services and all of them, all of them were not successful. All of them failed to, to be successful from a standpoint of raising taxes. So in light of those trends, I'm sure some of viewers who are listening to this or have been following some of the developments out here are wondering, well, how is it? How is it with, you know, the, the trends being what they are with taxes and the concern as a whole? How is it that we're able to still make these investments at UW Sheboygan or why are we making these investments mm -hmm. to the extent we are at UW Sheboygan? How would you respond to that? Well, I would say that <clears throat> tax, um, tax revenue is generated from what? from people who pay taxes. <laughs> and so if you have a, a, the better educated workforce that you have, you know, the more income the, the light that you make and the more taxes that they're able to, to pay. So we're actually investing in the future uh, tax base for the county by providing these educational mm -hmm. facilities. I mean, just simply put. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I would, I would agree with that. I look at it as money in the bank and a, and a very solid um, investment. And there is a difference between uh, an investment and an expense. Uh, they both look the same on paper, but they're not. And education is absolutely uh, an investment. And I think that the county has been very wise. Um, obviously, I have some bias in this, but I think the county has been quite wise in investing in education in the local campus because it's going to ensure to a great degree that the residents, as they grow up here, are educated here, stay here, create businesses, pay taxes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I think that's very important. And it's obviously <coughs> Sheboygan County is one of only 13 counties that has this, this local opportunity. Um, and so I think the county's been very wise in investing because um, you're setting aside funding that you could do other things with. Um, in order to invest in the county's future. Uh, and I think that ultimately that's the important thing, is that you're investing in the future. And when you say county, obviously that's in the broadest sense, meaning yeah. the county board, yeah. the Absolutely. county taxpayers. Yes. And one of the things that I know I feel so strongly about living in this community and raising my family is we have so much going well for us, whether it's UW Sheboygan, our school system that just has received national recognition mm -hmm. for being, what, right. the top two or three in the yeah. country. Right. Yeah. Uh, when you look at our economy here, it's starting to diversify more, and clearly it's going to continue to di diversify with the opportunity for people to come here and get a good mm -hmm. education. So mm -hmm. all of that is so important to our local economic development and quality of life. Mm -hmm. And as you, and I'm Sure, obviously you're here, Rich, because of the position. Absolutely. But clearly people, when they move to a new area to raise their family or settle down, they look at the quality of the schools and uh, the quality of life. Mm -hmm. And I just think we're so fortunate to have a pretty nice package here. Yeah. Well, yeah, we only absolutely. have a couple of minutes remaining. <laughs> and in those couple of minutes, are there any 
other areas that you just wanted to touch on briefly or any other uh, positives that you wanted to share about UW Sheboygan, especially if someone's never come up here and checked this place mm -hmm. out before? Yeah, but I would certainly encourage them to do that, especially with the new building going on and all the excitement uh, that's happening around that. And I, I, people need to familiarize. I think people probably are not as familiar as they perhaps should be about everything that we have to offer out here. And we have so many things going through our uh, continuing education uh, program, uh, through our pre-college program, uh, summer programming. Uh, we already touched on our baccalaureate uh, degree programming. Um, it's a different place, you know. I, I, I run into people all the time out in the community and say, oh yeah, I was, I was out mm -hmm. the center, you know, back in the 70s or 80s mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, I encourage them to come out because it's a much different place than it was, you know, 10, even 10 years ago. And, and, and also, you mentioned um, off, the, off the air here, but I know that you're working on, what, a new garden or some type oh, of, yeah. mm -hmm. maybe you want to <coughs> mention that briefly. Yeah, the Brookline Gardens, yeah. It's a group of people who would like to site a garden here on the campus that's specifically designed for uh, uh, early childhood you know, children, uh, thematically based on children's literature. Uh, so it would be about two, two acre interactive gardens for children that, that hope, we're hoping to have constructed out here in the next couple of years. Um, and that's a pretty, I mean, that's a multi-million dollar investment, Absolutely. isn't yeah, that? Yeah, a fairly yeah. large investment, yeah. yeah. And then our partnership with the UW Extension, I see that expanding. I see more programming opportunities and services uh, through the UW Extension since we're now part of the same family under, this, under one chancellor. Uh, I anticipate much more collaboration between, between us and providing services to the county. Very good. Yeah, absolutely. Rich, anything final that you wanted to share? Yeah, I would say that although geographically we're the campus <coughs> on the hill, philosophically, philosophically we are not the campus on the hill. And we want members of the community to, to make use of our campus. We want people to be actively engaged in our campus, whether it's uh, for an academic reason or not. Uh, we have a lot to offer here, whether it's uh, through our theater, which is thriving, and we have a lot of community members who, who uh, come up here and are part of our theater and theater program whether they're patrons or whether they're actually acting in some of our plays and musicals. Uh, as Ray touched on, we have an outstanding uh, continuing education department, um, and we do rent out space to, to the community. Um, we're, we are quite simply not the campus on the hill, and we, we're a member of the community, and we want the community on our campus. Very good. Well, Dean Ray Hernandez, Assistant Dean Richard Barnhouse, appreciate you being our guest today. and. For those of you who had the opportunity to view this program, don't hesitate to uh, come on up to UW Sheboygan and take a look around. And these two are always so open and, and willing to meet with people, and they have an outstanding staff. And if you want to check out the new science edition or get a feel for what this campus has to offer, please don't hesitate because this is our campus throughout for all the people in Sheboygan County, and please make use of it. So again, thank you for your time, and thank you for all your hard work. Thank you for having us. Until next time, on behalf of Chairman Bill Gehring, myself, Adam Payne, County Administrative Coordinator, and the full Sheboygan County Board, thank you for joining us.